Well, <laughs> I forgot to turn the microphone on. <laughs> welcome, everyone. Let me get rid of these next. We don't need them. So, welcome to the show, everyone. Uh, let me just quit this so it's not in the way anymore. Uh, so, welcome, everyone. I'm uh, just going to pop in the live chat. Just say hi if you are here. Um, so, who have we got so far? Not many, but there'll be certainly more coming up. Uh, surely Steve is here saying greetings all. Um, Vilken was saying finally, I love this, I'm finally on time, but it's too late in my country and I need to go to sleep. Enjoy streaming, guys. I will watch it tomorrow. Uh, Carl's also saying hello, people. Hope everyone is well. Uh, Derek is saying, oh, this is an interesting one. Um, has the A7S III completely eclipsed your love of the A9's video? Um I'll talk about that because I'm going to actually discuss how I've gone with the A9 in the first week shortly. Um, but look, the A9 is in a world of it. Uh, sorry, the A7S III is sort of in a world of its own uh, if you're talking about video, definitely. Um, but I still would use the A9 um, and I still will use the A9 uh, for 1080p and stuff like that. And I want to do a test, Derek, actually, to... Uh, and I sh probably should try and do it fairly soon to test what the 1080p video looks like, say, from the A9, the A7 uh, III, and the A7S III, because that would be a really interesting test. Um, oh, two, we, we go into daylight savings tonight, so we start daylight savings. So from next week, I may start having a beer with you again. Yeah. I came on an hour earlier today because I was just ready, so I thought, well, I'm coming on an hour earlier uh, today. Um, RVG1 uh, says, hello, David, from Plantation, Florida, and hope you are enjoying your new toy. I certainly am. I've been having a ball just playing around with it for the last week. I've, the, the only issue is I've had a stack of reviews and things like that that I've got to do, so I haven't really had much time to get out and shoot. I've just tested it really at home um but from the testing that i've done it looks amazing hopefully next week i can get out and do some real full-on testing and i've just been learning the menu and i'll talk about that uh when we go through this shortly um steve said is it possible to love two cameras equally i love that um here i said greetings coffee dudes delta said a sony slow-mo always looks jittery to me now that's that's i think the slow-mo you're seeing there too is because of youtube compression um, it's just the live stream too, because when I play the video itself, it looks beautiful uh, on the computer. It's something to do with how YouTube compresses it or it, you know, when you're doing lives or even when you upload to the, to YouTube as well. Uh, if I check the video, like I said, native, it, they look great. Um, what else? Uh, greetings, everyone. Michael, message retracted. I don't know what he put, perhaps something naughty. <laughs> Adam's also here. James saying hi. Um, Arji said, really uh, nice intro. Thank you so much. Uh, where is a dance? What is oh, <laughs> I did that last week when I was unboxing. Is that what you're talking about, Diggy? Um, my, uh, David, your locations are epic. A photographer's paradise. I know we are so lucky here. Wait, the one that I've just shot in the Grampians. I did it with the iPhone, believe it or not. The iPhone 11. Um and it's gorgeous. The footage is stunning. I can't wait to put that together and share that with you. We are very lucky in Australia, yes. We do have beautiful locations. Um, Michael said, good day, David and everyone. Um, hi, David. Uh, who do you love more now, the S <laughs> the S3 or your family? I love it. Um, Brett said, Queensland, don't I have daylight savings? Thank you. I love daylight savings, Brett. I absolutely love it. I can't wait for daylight savings to start. Uh, I love having the extra time at the end of the day. And, and Kerry loves it too. Like if you work full time to be able to come home and then be able to, you know, go out and take the dog for a walk or whatever you want to do or, or do things, you know, late into the evening. Yeah, I just love daylight savings. I hate it when it stops. But everyone's different. Mark's here as well. Uh, from the fashion mecca brisbane uh willie said hi from ireland i hope the new baby has not been keeping you up at night i didn't sleep the first night i got it i have to admit i i woke up at 2 30 in the morning thinking about menus and everything i'm so ridiculous how excited i get about new gear it's it's just crazy um so i woke up at 2 30 i could not get back to sleep it was doing my nuts in um what else have we got um 
Nick said, uh, has the new 8K and 12K cameras that you have come into public domain settings pushed more pressure on Canon, Nikon, to produce 8K as minimum video standards? Well, maybe, Nick, but I don't think 8K is needed anytime soon. Look, if Sony had put it in, I'd say, great, it's there. Um, but I can, look, I can edit, and I'll talk about that in a minute. I can edit the 4K footage, the 10-bit uh, 422, really well on my computer. There's no way I'll be able to edit 8K. And really, it's just not needed at this stage. I think 4K is going to see me for the next four years easily, uh, probably longer. Um, but it might have pushed them, yeah. Johnny said, hi, David, if you have tried it, uh, we have to talk about S-Log3 having green skin colours, but S-Log2 seems to be way better. Interesting. Um, I haven't done any skin testing yet, Johnny, but I will do that. Um, the problem is Melbourne is still in lockdown. Uh, we've come out of lockdown here, but we're country, so it's harder for me to get people to um, do shoots with and stuff. And you know Kerry just hates it. Like whenever I, I ask Kerry to do stuff, she'll just I, I'm, I don't want to do it. Um, so I would like to do some skin tests, but I am using the Leeming Lutz, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and it seems to work great, so I, I'd love to know what the skin uh, colours are like there. Um, well, Delta Dave said YouTube compression. Yeah, it, it's YouTube does it all. Like I said, if I view the, the videos that I create on the uh, QuickTime, uh, beautiful and smooth. So it's just YouTube. Uh, man, I'm ordering the A7S Mark III next month. Hope they release the E-mount cinema lenses too. Great to catch your live show once again, and I hope everyone's okay. Um, we, yeah, we're great. So I hope everyone's okay over there too, Julian. Uh, Rab said, hi from France. Uh, Jay said, um, so you bought the A7S. What's happened to <laughs> waiting until the price drops? Well, the thing was, um, I had an offer from a friend of mine who wanted to buy one of my A7 threes. Um, and he gave me a good price for it. So I thought, well, look, why I can get a good price for it, I would sell it. So I sold that and a couple of other things that I had there that I wasn't using anymore, and it gave me the money to pay for the uh, A7S III without uh, paying anything or putting credit on or whatever. So it was basically a direct swap. So that's the reason why I bought it. Uh, hello, everyone. Let's see some video. <laughs> um, Nick said, lockdown here in Dublin uh, till the 10th of October and maybe extended. Yeah, we've just come out here. Uh, but, you know, look, our cases are extremely low. I mean, I think we had yesterday there was seven cases in the whole of Victoria and, and I think probably not much more in the whole of Australia. So, look, we, I don't even know why we're locked down anymore, to be completely honest. But um, where I am in the country, Victoria, we have no cases. So, yeah, I mean, I think we'll all be out shortly. When you compare it to what's happening overseas, it's crazy how locked down we are here in Australia that, you know, when we have no sort of cases at all, it's, it's a bit nuts. Um, and that's about it. All right, so let's start the show because I've got stacks to talk to you about today, actually, guys. I mean, I've got some really interesting stories we're going to go through, um, which will be good. I'm going to start today talking about my uh, first week with the A7S III anyway. So let's get stuck in. Let me just... Put this show start here. 10, 40. Okay, let's get stuck into it. Well, welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us again for our uh, usual show. Now, I do like to do these on the Friday evening in US time and a Saturday morning here. Um, Carl just said there's 44,000 new cases of COVID-17 in the US today. <laughs> I mean, that is nuts. Like I said, I think we had seven. Um, so, you know, it's crazy the difference and we're in full lockdown carl that's what cracks me up um i mean melbourne is i'm not now anymore but we still can't we're still limited on we have to wear masks so if i go outside i've got to wear a mask 
everyone has to, or you get a $200 fine. Um, we can, if you're in Melbourne, for instance, who had seven cases yesterday, the whole of the Melbourne regional area, um, they are locked. They can have two hours exercise per day. They can only, I think, meet with two other family members. Um, if they go five kilometres from their home, they get a $5,000 fine. Uh, it's nuts. When you think the number of cases we've got and how draconian the lockdown is, uh, you know, is crazy. Weddings are limited to 10 people, uh, and that's including the bride and groom and the celebrant. Um, so, you know, I mean, as a photographer, we're still decimated because of the lockdown that we've got here. Uh, I'm a li- We have a little bit less restrictions because I'm classified as country. We've got no cases in the country, but we still can only have 10 people at a wedding. Um, and things like that. So for me as a wedding photographer, it's it's out for this year probably. Um, but, you know, and like I said, you're saying you've got 44,000 cases and we've got, I don't, I don't know, you know, like um, seven cases or something. It's ridiculous. But, oh, well, hopefully in the next couple of weeks it'll all ease off a bit. So how is everyone? Hoping everyone's fine. Um, I'm going to start today talking about the A9. So um, we'll get to that in a second. I just wanted to finish the chat just to sort of see what they're saying down the last couple of questions. Uh, good on you for getting one. I'm envious uh, since you got one. He's talking about the A7 III. Um, Nick said Ireland, seven, 470 cases and one death today. Um DZ, like I said, I upgraded to 4K video last year, upgrading computers this year, including an extra 20 terabyte for backups. 8K video won't uh, use for a long time. Yeah, I'm the same. You know, it's I don't think I'll be using 8K for a long, long time due to the file sizes. Mark said, thank God I'm in Queensland. Don't even want to, don't even want seven COVIDs up here. Well, like I said, Mark, we have none in country Victoria. So the way Melbourne's dropping, it will probably be down to none within the next couple of weeks, I would say. Uh, Chris said, hello, David. Hot day in Los Angeles, having a Bud Lime. Lovely. Ken also said, USA doesn't take it seriously. People cry about wearing a mask. Yeah, well, we have to wear masks all the time here now. Um, Carl said, true. Venom said, as long as you all don't let us Americans back you <laughs> uh, back into your country, you'll probably be fine. <laughs> Laugh out loud. All right, so let me discuss this. I want to talk about my first week with the A7S III. And we're on 14, Uh, put 14, 15, that's close enough. Okay, so how have I gone with the first week? Well, unbelievable. Uh, This camera is nuts. I've got the small rig. I will probably will put the cage back on. Uh, I've got the cage here for the uh, small rig, uh, the full cage for the A7S III. Uh, but I reviewed the L bracket yesterday, so that's the reason why I've got the L bracket on. But I have ordered another, um, and I've paid for this through small rig as well. Um, I've ordered another handle that comes on this side just because I'd like to try it too, uh, hand handheld with two uh, grips. The other one has two screws, so it'll just screw in on that side. And I've also ordered an L plate, uh, sorry, a Arca Swiss plate that screws in onto the bottom. Um, So that's what I've got for that. But I probably will leave the cage on permanently, I think, because it's, if you take off the handle, it's actually quite small. Uh, You know, I mean, it really is quite small. And the weight that this adds is almost nothing. I mean, it really is. I don't know how small rig does what they do for the price. I mean, look, yes, I know, look, they send me this stuff, but I don't have to give good reviews. Um, I have contacted Tilter because I, I'd love if they'll send me. I don't know whether they will. They may not be interested. But I have uh, contacted Tilter to see if they would send me their version of this cage because I'd love to review that for you guys. So hopefully um, they'll be interested. Um, you know, and I really um, hope that's the case. Uh, Tammy just said Trump is in hospital with COVID, you know, uh, because uh, Marsa for be- be- <laughs> beaters, yeah, I know. Uh, we don't, we, I'm not going to get involved in the po- political side of things. I don't, like I said, I'm Australian. I don't really care who gets voted in in the US. To be completely honest, but um, I do feel for Trump, and I hope he's fine. I mean, that's all I'd say, and I'd say the same thing for Biden as well. If Biden had it, I would say exactly the same thing. So that's really all I'm going to say. But uh, you know, I do, ho- I do think and hope he's okay. Um, so yeah, so this this is and good day, Tammy too. Thank you for joining us. Uh, this case is really good because it's so small. So hopefully, 
uh, Tilta will um, Tilta will send me their version of it because I'd love to see if it is any better uh, because I think it is a more expensive type unit uh, just to see how they compare against the small rig stuff. So that would be really interesting if I can get that. Uh, but at the moment, I tried on yesterday putting on the small rig uh, L bracket. Uh, and the reason why I wanted to get this is because I am interested in doing uh, astrophotography once I can get back out and say go into the deserts and stuff. I'd love to try some again and having an L bracket is really handy for that. Um, so uh, that's what I've got on that. So I've left that on but I'll probably take the L bracket off now and put the cage back on because I will be using it more with the Ninja V and things like that. And remember like any Sony camera, don't put things that are heavy in the shoe mount uh, because that is always a weak point on Sony cameras. Um, so if you are going to use things like uh, Ninja Vs and things like that, uh, the monitors, you're far better off to get a cage or some sort of system where you'd have that not connected onto the hot shoe because you, you, you have the potential to break one. In fact, I have broke one. I broke one once with a um, flash on. Uh, I just walked past, I think I had it on a bench and it fell down and the um, flash hit the bench as well and it broke the whole mount uh, on my, I think that was the A7, the, one of my A7-3s. And so I had to send that back to get done. Um, so... Um, I'll, um, I would never ever put anything heavy, particularly on a Sony, uh, shoe mount. They're not built like when I had Nikons, like Nikons was built like a tank. When I had the D4Ss and the D850 and those cameras, this was built like a tank. So please use a cage. If you're going to use anything like that, use a cage. Um, so... This is also cool too. I, I did, when I first put this in, and I mentioned this in the review as well, I thought, well, oh, that's a bummer because when you open up the screen, you can't get by. But they've left this little cutout that's in, I can't really show you. Oh, you're there. You can see it right there. Uh, they've left a little cutout there that if you tilt this back, you can then get the uh, screen in. So you can use it that way. But I did say in the video that, if you're gonna do this, whatever you do, make sure you get a screen protector because I think this could potentially scratch the glass. Uh, and I've got a screen protector that I've got coming. Um, it'll be here in the next few days, I hope. So I haven't got that yet. Uh, so I have got a glass screen protector coming. So that should be here in a few days. And I recommend to put that on all your cameras anyway, because it does protect the screen uh, as well. So how have I found using it uh, over the last week? Well, the menus uh, took a, a little bit of time to get used to. Uh, I found that the menus, because they're completely different, when you first open them up and look through them, it's, it is quite intimidating actually, because it is so different. But having said that, the menus make complete sense. Uh, they really do. It's just that you get so used to using like the A9 and the A7 III menus um, and all the other Sony menus that were, that were out there that, that, that becomes sort of ingrained into you and you sort of uh, don't have to worry about or think about what you're doing because you just know what to do. Uh, I found the, A7, the A7S III menus were so different that it took a while to get used to and I'm still sort of tweaking them a little bit and that's why I haven't done my settings yet. I'm just about there though now. Uh, I've sort of done a mix of a couple of people that I saw. Uh, Philip Bloom did a good, um, he, he shared his menu system, which was uh, the um, favourites menu. And I've used most of those because that was really good. He said it took him about four hours to get that done. And I've used Lindley, uh, exactly the same as what he's done actually for that part of it. But then I've changed other parts in my menus to suit me and also the photography side to suit, suit me. So I probably will do a video in the next few days about that uh, and I'll take you all through it and I will share my settings with you so that you can um, use that as a guide and then change it to suit you if you wanted to. So that will be shared uh, fairly soon. Uh, just sort of to talk about uh, autofocus on this thing is nuts, like very comparable to my A9. Uh, it, it really is terrific. Um, I think the A9 is still... Uh, the A9 is still the, the ultimate thing that you could uh, use. I can't remember what I got, Dave. Dave's asked me what brand screen protector did I get. I'll have to see if I can find it, but it was about $19. Uh, I just bought it from a local uh, camera store, um, but it's a glass one, so I'll have to let you know uh, what it is. Uh, I'll see if I can find it. 
I'll put if I can find it, Dave. I'll put it in the, in the comment box down below. Um, once I've finished, I'll let you know the brand. Um, so, yeah, the autofocus is is superb, and like I said, it is it's getting now to be the point where you just don't have to worry about almost doing manual focus anymore. There are times where you still would have to do it, like if you're revealing something, you know, like coming behind a door and say showing a bride that was getting ready. Well, what will happen is it will focus on the door and then you'll come out and it'll focus on the bride. That so times like that you would use manual focus, um, but. Uh, the autofocus on this is nuts. And like I said, I can't wait to use it in a shoot and do like a model shoot or a dancer. Uh, I really uh, am looking forward to that. I think what I'll probably do though is go and do a, a shoot down the coast sometime next week. And I'd love to do waterfalls um, and go into the beautiful f sort of forest we have, which have all the ferns and the gorgeous waterfalls and all that sort of stuff and try and use a little bit of the dynamic range with the waterfalls being so white against you know the darker background and stuff like that so i think that might be what i do as my first shoot uh for the review of this um but i love it i love the screen i love the fold out and flip out screen it's a pity it couldn't be better resolution like but i've always discussed that with you that i think sony need to start looking at you know getting better screens uh, the menu is terrific though. I, I love the way the menu works. I can't get used to using the touch screen though for the menus because I I just forget. I forget that it's there. Uh, and I suppose anyone that's been um, using the Sony cameras like me for so long, you're just so used to using the joystick or whatever to move around or, or you know, your, your wheel at the back that you forget that you can use the touch screen. And it's quite funny because the touch screen is really responsive. Um, but... I've got to try and always remember that, that that's there because it is so handy. When I realize it's there, it's brilliant to be able to just touch on the back of the screen, you know, and move it around. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's fantastic. It's, um, it was much faster, like in moving things. Let me just see if I can just show you. Uh, it's much faster in moving than what I thought it was going to be. Like, it's very, very responsive, like, like really responsive. Uh, and I was surprised about that. I thought it would have been a bit sort of, um, you know, like a delay or something like that. But but it's it's super responsive. And like I said, I keep forgetting to use it. And that's the funny thing about it. Like even if you go into your FN menu, let me just quit out of this for a minute. Um, if you go into the FN menu, how you can use the touch screen on this as well is just brilliant. Uh, you know, and I... I really have to start getting used to using that. But I will get more and more used to that as I start to use it more and more full on. Like I said, I've been a, a bit tied down doing reviews and things like that as well. Um, but, you know, it, it's it's really beautiful how it works. Uh, the ergonomics are, are just beautiful. I mean, I love the, the dials. The dials are much more pronounced. I suppose if you've had an A7R4, and I use Michael's, who's in here now. Oh, David, thank you so much for the donation. I'll just show that. Um, David gave me a donation. Thank you so much. Hundred dollars? I thought it was ten. <laughs> Hang on, I've got to do it. <laughs> David, that is crazy. Wow. Well, I didn't expect that, David, at all. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's the most I've ever got. Um. So the oh, I have to stop smiling now. Uh, the what was I talking about? Yeah, the menus and stuff. Oh yeah, the ergonomics. So the ergonomics are brilliant. And if you use the A7R4, you would also know that uh, they're much more pronounced than what the A9 and, and things like that are. That the way they stick out is much uh, better. In fact, with the A9 and the A7 III, I did use a product that had little buttons that you could stick onto it that made them a little bit more pronounced. So that was amazing. Um, let me just show these. So I really. I do love that side of it. The grip I'm starting to get a little bit more used to, but you know what? I, I, like I'm only a short guy and I, I do actually still prefer the A9 grip. And that's funny. I suppose most of you are going to say um, you prefer the, um, the, the, the larger grip because your hands can go around it. But I, I do probably prefer the grip of the A9. I just seem to feel like that fits my hand better. But certainly if you've got larger hands, you would adore the slightly larger grip that this has. Uh, but ergonomically, it is leagues ahead of what you would use, say, in the A9 or, or the A7 III. Um, I, I just love that aspect of it. Uh, the weather sealing 
looks great. From from how I've looked at it, everything is nicely sealed, much, much better than what uh, it was with the A9 or the A7 III. And I love too how, uh, let me just take this off, um, just so I can sort of show you. I also love how the doors function on this because the, it is so, when you do it and you use this type of camera, when you see how it's implemented here, compared to what the A9 is where they just flop all around, um, you know, th this is so much better than what the other cameras that I've had are from Sony. Like, it's just brilliant the way the doors go, and they're all sort of nicely weather sealed. Uh, underneath, you do lose that little hole, so if you did want to put a dummy battery in, uh, you have lost the hole now, so you can't sort of uh, put the lead through and then close the door. So that's an issue, so you'd have to leave the door open. But I think they did that for weather sealing, because that hole that you used to put a lead through was a potential um, problem for sort of sealing and stuff like that. So, you know, that's an issue. Um, but the body is fantastic. I love it. It feels really nice in your hand. There's a nice bit of weight to it. Um, the EVF is nuts. The EVF is the nicest EVF I've ever looked through. And in fact, it is so close to using, um, uh, you, you know, the type we used to use with digital SLRs, which was the mirror, it's not funny. It is beautiful. It's so big and you, you just can't understand it until you look through it, how gorgeous the EVF is. I've tried manual focusing and it is it is so accurate and easy to see when you use um, the this beautiful EVF that's inside. It's it's stunning. Uh, the only problem I've found with the this monitor here is that if you face it towards the front like this, the second that you twist it, it goes upside down. And I hate that. Sony need to fix that. It, because if you're doing a vlogging thing from the front and you want to twist the monitor a fraction, you then turn upside down. That, that is a real problem. Um, but apart from that, it's, it's great. But the EVF, man, and uh, if you haven't seen it, it is brilliant. The refresh rate is brilliant unbelievable Ken it is so fast uh, like I said it's almost like using an optical EVF it is that good it's that sharp you've even got a, a switch where you can change it so if you're using glasses it shrinks it a little bit so that you can see it I've kept it at, at its full uh, resolution because I, I seem to think it's fine the way it is uh, but that works brilliant um, like I said the focus is outstanding the the picture quality I did do a video up online about that uh, in the um, settings that I've been using uh, and I have been using um, let me just come back uh, I was using for my movie setting I was using the XAVCSI 4K. Now that's a 10-bit 422 format that I'm using, uh, and I was using that. If you want to know about that, I have put a video up about that that sort of went through the whole thing. Um, it, it's it's great, and that plays smoothly on my computer uh, up to 4K 60. Uh, and it's really smooth, actually. I was surprised because I've got a 213 Mac Pro. I've got the Dustbin Mac Pro. Uh, and I thought it would have been jerky or dropping frames, and it wasn't at all. Uh, so that's fantastic. It plays up to that. But if I go to, to say, 100p or 120, um, it won't play. It, it just stops. It keeps skipping frames. So if, if I convert to ProRes, and I'm on a Mac, and I use – what am I using? Um – let me just see. I use a soft video converter. Uh, I've been using that. I'll just show you what this looks like. Um, if you're on a Mac, you might be interested. Um, let me just blow this one up and I'll show you. So I've been using this program. Let me come back. I've been using this program here. Um, and it's just AC soft, I think. And all you do is you'll notice if I look at it uh, that I can move the profile as ProRes HQ Movie. Uh, if I click down in here, you can determine 
uh, all these different formats. So you could choose multiple different formats. There's so many that you could choose uh, there. And I'll, I'll have to look at some different ones just to sort of see what uh, is available in there. But at the moment, I'm just using uh, ProRes HQ. Uh, and then I can drop all of the files into here and then batch convert them. Uh, and this works terrific. So I can basically come home after my shoot, drop all the files in, and then walk away and just let it go overnight or how long it takes, uh, and then they'd be ready to use the next day. Because I've found if you convert all of your files to ProRes, uh, it will, it's like butter. I mean, it, it edits just like butter, even the uh, 100 or the 120p. Um, so that's a way you can do it. And I'm sure if you have a Windows machine, uh, there'd be something similar that you would be able to uh, to use. And, you know, and if you wanted to sort of recommend things, guys, you could put that in the comment box down below. Um, you could sort of recommend what you like to use on the Windows side. Um, but that's what I've been using anyway, and I think it works brilliantly. It uses all the cores of my Mac. Um, I have a 12-core Mac, uh, and it uses all the cores uh, that I've got on that. So it's very, very quick. So that's what I've been using uh, for that. Um, what else? Uh, that's probably all at this stage to talk about the uh, the camera. Oh, the, I love how the movie button is right now next to your manual exposure because I always shoot manual exposure when I'm doing still frames. I'm dying to try this out for photos as well. So I will be doing that uh, very soon as well. Uh, I'm dying to give that a go and use it as a stills camera. Um, and in fact, what I'm probably going to do is have my stills format uh, the size to 16 by 9 because remember a lot of the time now I'm, I'm just doing stuff for uh, digital type work which is you know the YouTube videos uh, or I'm sharing weddings uh, and but the weddings are done for video as well and if I do the photos 16 by 9 I can then drop them into the timeline and they're already the right size instead of them being cropped so I think I'm going to convert the file size in this for the uh, raw files or the JPEGs to 16 by 9 and then I can drag them straight in uh, to the um, computer. Yeah, I, I was going to mention too. So yes, with the um, my video settings, I am using XAVC SI 4K and my movie settings um, is it's on the 500 megabits per second, 422, 10 bit because I, I usually shoot in 50p or it will be 60p uh, if you're in the US, because I like the ability to slow down uh, that as well. Uh, but but that's how I will say shoot dance videos or model shoots and things like that. I probably will shoot 50p all the time. Then I have that ability to slow down. If I wanted to, then I could go into S and Q mode and do 100 or 120. Um, but if I'm doing things like um, more sort of speeches, uh, stuff like that in weddings or some wedding stuff, I might go down to, to the 24p or 25p. Uh, but at this stage, I've just set it at 50p. Uh, and then with my settings itself, um, up at the top, what I did, and I'll save this. Like I said, I'll, I'll save everything for you so you'll be able to get my quick key settings and everything else. Uh, up the top, uh, you've got your three programmable buttons. And on the first one, so my normal settings on here are using that uh, 4K 50p because that's the way that I like to shoot. Um, what else have I got? The And if these three buttons that I've got there, uh, the first one, it will go to, I've just got to think what it is now. How did I set it? Just got to remember. Oh, yeah. Um, on the first one there, I went to, um, I've got to remember. I can't remember. All I can remember is number two, I went to um, using S-Log. And that's how I did that. It was S-Log, the setting on that one. And then on the third one, I was using um, HDL. So that's the way I've worked. I just can't remember what I've said on my first one. Like I said, I'm still playing around with this. I'll have to have a look. But once, like I said, once I get this all set for you, I'll save these settings and then you can upload them yourself. I do like the fact that it may have been that I had, um, I, that's it, I remember now. I think I had it so it went to 100 uh, 
P on the number one. So number one was 100P. Uh, number two was using S log three. And then number uh, three was using HGL. And I do like that because I can just switch it immediately going through these menus and then you can get the format that you like. But like I said, that's still at this stage work in play. I have disabled the record button though, because I use this as the record button, uh, your normal shutter button. And then I was able to program the uh, red record button here for a different um, function which is because otherwise you're losing a function and I can just I just like to press the record button like that uh, which works out well um, the shutter button is really nice I'll just play that so you can hear it it's it's got a really nice sound to it so that sounds really nice um, I've quickly done some uh, video footage uh, around the home and I did it outside and the, and the footage, the 10-bit 422 is stunning. It, it really is stunning the way you can grade that. You can even underexpose. It's almost like you can relate it to like shooting RAW as against JPEG. You have so much more latitude to be able to sort of extend your range, uh, you know, like bring your shadows up. It's not advisable to do that too much though because you'll get noise, but you can underexpose a little bit to protect highlights and then bring it up. I do recommend using uh, overexposure Using, and I use Leeming LUTs, and that's a great way of doing it. And they give you all your settings that you have to do. Uh, they give you what the zebras have to be set at. And all you do for your exposure is just have your zebras showing on the screen. And then you have, you back your exposure down just until the zebras disappear. And then that will give you the perfect exposure. You take it into your uh, editing software, add the Leeming LUTs uh, LUT, and then basically there's very little you have to do to change it. Uh, and that's the way that I'm working at this stage, and it, it seems to work fantastic. Um, oh, sorry. I just realized I'm talking there. Thanks for that. Um, yeah, so it, it works great. So Leeming LUTs is uh, terrific. And I'm using that now all the time. And it certainly makes editing easy. They give you all different ones that you can use. I'll just show you what it is, just so you know, because it's such a great program. Uh, let me just bring it up. Because um, you may find this interesting. All right, let me just move over and I'll show you. So I use this. Uh, which is Leeming Lut Pro. Uh, and this is, let me just move this down a bit. Oops. Okay, so this is what I use. So it's Leeming Lut Pro. Um, and they give it to multiple different cameras. Um, you can see down here, they, they have Panasonic series, Fuji, Sony A series, uh, and everything else. But the one I use, where are we? Uh, is, where's the Sony one? Just got to find it because I'd like to show you how it's set. Oh. Where's it gone? Just trying to see where it has the, oh yeah, A series. Yeah, it's this one. Yep, so it's this one down here. Now, it's the Sony A series one. I was getting confused and I'm thinking it was the uh, the older Sony camera. Um, and then this will work with your all of your A7s, threes, A9s, everything else. And you can see that you can buy a whole package, but if you go into the setup guide, what this gives you um, and I found that it works, I believe he's doing another version, it'll be an update, or it might be a paid one, I'm not sure, but uh, he's doing an updated version for the A7S III, but he did put out a guide the other day about how to set your zebras for the, A5, uh, for the A7S III. Um, but if you look down, there's a whole series of settings that he tells you how to put in. Um, you can see here that he said for, if you're using uh, natural, so this is if you're using the A9, he tells you what settings. This is so that each of these cameras matches up. So if you're using multiple cameras in post, uh, this is how they will all match up to be basically the same. So this is using the neutral, your standard profile, and basically he's telling you that you just put in minus three in the saturation, minus three in the sharpness. Um, if you're looking at and using sign two, he tells you that you have to use 92 plus in your zebras. 
you have sine 2, that's your gamma you're going to be using, etc. Sharpness, you've always put down to minus 7. You've got settings there for S log 2. So you can see how different that the zebras have to be set between S log 2 and S log 3. S log 2 is 107 plus. S log 3 is 95 plus. Now there's an edit to this. Uh, uh, excuse me. There's an edit to this that I'll show you a little bit down below because um, at the moment it's 95, but he did say you have to drop it one down. Uh, HLG is 100 plus and you're using BT 2020. So this is telling you exactly how you set everything up. And then there's a full setup guide about how you set your camera. So he tells you what, how, what picture profile to use. Uh, talks about custom white balances. And I'm not sponsored by him, guys. Um, I'm actually... Uh, I paid for this uh, and I did notice there's even a Ninja V recording set up there that it'll tell you how to set up your Ninja V um, and if you're using DaVinci Resolve. Uh, now this is the update I noticed. On the um, 25th of the 9th he said Sony A7S 3 unit users need to replace all profiles for using exposed to the right Zebra values by 1% to have them work correctly with S-Log3. So it needs to be 94, not 95 plus. Um, and there's another stuff there talking about it. But uh, I've, I did it, and it seems to be that uh, the profile works really good as it is. But he is adding an extra, um, I think he's doing some extra profiling uh, shortly. Um, I don't know. Let me just see how much it is, because it's not that expensive. Uh, let me just see what it is. Oh, God, I hope I'm not going to order it. It's 55 euro uh, is the price. I know it's 25. Uh, I've got three in there for some reason. I'm not sure why I've got two lots in there. Um, it's around, anyway, it's around about 25, 30 euro um, is the price of it. But it's such a great, great program. Uh, it, it is really, really good. Uh, so if you have any questions about that anyway, let me know. Um you're stuck on the chat screen, David. Hopefully it's come back now, I hope. Yeah, it does. I'm checking over there. So apart from that, stay tuned because I will have more to update uh, about how this all works. But so far, I love it and I really don't want to put it down. I mean, I've been... Um, you know, using it all the time, trying to set up the menus. And I love doing that. It's really interesting. Uh, I find it, you know, it's it's great to use in that regard. Uh, love the flip out screen. Love the controls, the dials. The autofocus is nuts. The EVF is insane. Um, it, and the 10-bit footage is just so good to uh, to edit in, the, um, in Final Cut. It really is great. Uh, let me put that away now. So if you have any questions about that, guys, just like I said, leave them down below. You can also put anything in Q&A too, and I'll answer you as well um, if, you know, if we can go back through that. So let me just check the Q&A and see what people are saying about it or if there's anything you're saying. Um, can't believe that donation, David. Thank you so much. Uh, I think we started from here. So the brand of screen protectors, uh, Dave, I'll put down below. I'll try and find what I bought, uh, bought so I'll tell you that. That should be coming uh, very, very soon. Uh, Mark said, so interesting. The S3 was such an issue at 12 megapixel, and now it's amazing. Told you, David. Um, what else? Michael said, um, oh, he's just talking to someone else. Um, Brett said, I always have glass screen protector. Yeah, I do too, because there's an issue with the Sony screens. If you don't do that, they can peel off. That protector can peel off. So you should always have the screen protector on the Sony cameras. Um, how does the longevity of the battery life compared to the Sony cameras? Uh, it's, it's, well, I think it's, it's much worse. Look, it is worse. I wouldn't say much worse, but I have noticed the difference uh, in going through a battery. It probably would be the difference of using one battery a day as to a two. I would say it's, if you'd say it that way, it'll give you a guide about how much the battery usage t seems to change. You, remember, the processors and everything in this are much, much faster, and they're working, obviously, you know, using a lot more power. The EVF will be using a lot more power. Um, so, yes, you do notice a battery hit. Now, I would recommend if you used to use one before, take a spare battery, because now it will probably be two. Uh, 
Um, Carl said, you recommend a variable ND uh, that was reasonably priced a while back. It's the free well NDs I recommend. I've got both. I have the um, Peter McKinnon ones, and I also have the free well ones. Now, full transparency, I bought the Peter McKinnon ones, and they were expensive. Uh, I bought both of those, the, the 2 to 5 and the 6 to 10 or 6 to 9. Um, but I did a full test on it, Carl. If you search my channel, you'll be able to find them. Uh, they were that close. I, I think the Freewell ones um, were slightly different uh in color cast, but when I say slightly, it was so minute, it took just one little slider and they matched perfectly, but the price difference is massive. Uh, so I would probably say, if I had to recommend um, variable NDs, I would get the Freewell ones um, and not the others. I'll just show you. So these are the Peter McKinnon ones. I think I've got the other variables locked in the cupboard. It'll take me too long to open them. But but these are the P Peter McKinnon ones. Um, beautiful. I mean, they're beautiful filters. Uh, but like I said, I think the others that I've got, um, the Freewell ones are just as good and half the price. So I would recommend getting those over these just because of the price difference alone. And the slight, slight color cast. Well, check, like I said, check my video. If you search David Osler um, filter comparison or whatever, you'll find it. It's on my channel. If you check them out, you'll be able to make your own judgment. Uh, these were a slight, slight smidgen less color cast, but boy, they were close. Not worth the money. I don't think, but but they're still. I mean, when I say not worth the money, it's not worth the price difference. They, they're both great filters. Mark said, um, "Oh, hang on." Um, Julian said, "How's the picture quality for the S3? Is it better than you thought?" Um, it, yeah, it's stunning. It, it really is stunning. That that 4K 50, which is what I shoot in on Pal. Uh, is gorgeous to be able to slow that 4k footage down but to have it at 10 bit 422 is great what i do have to to test though is i do need to test to see how much of a difference i see between 422 and 420 i have to really test that to see if i can really notice any difference i believe you need the 422 if you're doing things like green screens um the, the 420 might be perfectly uh, acceptable for what I'm doing, which is normal wedding videos and dance videos and things like that. I may not be able to notice the difference. So these are tests that still have to come. Having the 10 bit is such an advantage because it enables you to push that file so much uh, and you don't get that banding in the sky when you edit as well. Um, but uh, I, I must do a test between 422 and 420 and just see what sort of difference that makes. Uh, I notice on the camera at the moment, the way that I've got this set up, uh, let me just, I'll change it to um, 24p just to get, well, I'll, I'll tell you straight away what the um, settings are. So at the moment I'm using, oops, I'm on video. At the moment, like I said, I'm using um, 422, it's 10 bits, and it's, um, I'm on stills mode. I'm getting 41 minutes out of the 160 uh, megabyte cards. Uh, they're the uh, CF Express cards. So I'm getting 41 minutes, and at the moment I'm duplicating the files across. If I was doing something that wasn't, I wasn't being paid, and it's just like I'm saying, I'm doing something for myself, like it's a YouTube review, um, things like that, uh, where it wasn't critical, I probably would just have the cards uh, backing, uh, moving to one to the other. So in other words, uh, I'd get double the time because once one card ran out, it will automatically switch to the second card. So if it's not a paid shoot as such, that's probably how it will work. But if I'm doing a paid shoot, I, I will always back up onto the second card. So at 50p uh, on 422 10-bit, 
uh, I'm getting 41 minutes. If I change that, I'm just curious to see what I get if I go to um, 24, uh, 24p, 25p. Let me come out of it. If I go to 25p, I get one hour 22. So there you go. It's a massive difference. So there is a huge penalty on um, how much you shoot. But that's also that's also the bit depth because I believe at the moment if I'm on 50p, let me just change that back, at 25p it's using 250 megabits per second at 422 10-bit, so it's 250. If I go to the 50p, it's now using 500 megabits per second at 422. So there's a huge, huge increase in your megabits uh, per second, and that's what's causing the cards to uh, fill up so fast. But you know what? Having said that, to have 41 minutes at shooting 50, 4K 50, um, at 500 megabits per second at 422 10-bit is a lot. Because remember, I'm only shooting 10 seconds per usual shoot. So I'm not sort of uh, shooting for a long period of time at all. There's no way I'm going to be shooting uh, speeches for that amount of time uh, using that format. I would probably use 1080p. Um, and I have to test that. Like I said, I've still got to test the 1080p. But I would probably use 1080p for those sort of things. There's no reason to shoot uh, wedding speeches uh, or things like that. You know, you, you say the wedding, actual ceremony at 4K uh, 50 or whatever. I'll probably still shoot those um, 1080p. I think that's probably the way that I'll work. And remember, even if I have a 4K timeline, I can upload 1080p onto that 4K timeline and it still looks very good. So I, I can do that sort of thing. And that's probably the way that I'll use it. Uh, it shows I can get roughly one and a half hours if I drop it down to 24p. Uh, if I go to up to 50, I'm getting 41 minutes. If I shoot 1080p, I get something like six hours. Um, so, you know, that gives you an idea about how those file formats sort of work. Um, Mark said, I'm going to hang by and back this camera. Makes more sense for me to wait on an A9X or an A74. Um, hopefully, they will uh, won't be too long away. Um, QE Box uh, is who made my glass screen protector for Sony off Amazon. Great screen protector. I know. Thank you so much for that donation. David said, JobKeeper. Uh, Tammy said, you're the man, David. Thanks, Tammy. Um, accidentally added a zero. Can't go back now. Oh, I hope you didn't do that, did you? <laughs> uh, Ken said, looks like a pretty uh, deep grip. It is. Yeah, the grip itself, like I said, is much heftier um, compared to, say, my A9. I haven't got that in here. Uh, I do prefer the grip of the A9, the original A9. I like that grip size, but that's me. But I'll get used to this. But the dial are so much better on this. The joystick is is superb uh, on this. And just the way everything's recessed, you know, uh, sort of not recessed, but but pops out so much more and it's so much more tactile. I love the feelings that these buttons uh, give me. Not really. I, I, I'm not really a big fan of the locks. I, I'm not a big fan of locks at all on any of these because I find if I'm trying to work quickly, they get in the way. And I've never been one that's had anything knocked before. Uh, like the exposure compensation, I've never had that being knocked, but that's just me. Others love the locks, but I'm not a big fan of that. But, but control-wise, you can't fault it. No, you really can't. Um. Uh, what else have we got? Carl said, ergonomically, the S, uh, the A7S um, III, I think, feels more the same as a full-size A99. Yeah, it would. Nick said, is the build robust of the new Sony cameras? Yes, it's much better. The build quality on the A7S III and even the A7R4 is, is so much better. And I would think the A7S III is going to be even better again. Michael said, yes, I think the S3 would be nice to have a pinky grip accessory for big hands. Yeah, that could be a good idea, Michael. Carl said, my A7R4 feels like a solid block. Uh, Paul said, so excited my A7S3 comes this month. 
waited two years and Pro AV had a great deal with $300 off Sony GM lenses. That's so good. Uh, uh, congratulations, Paul. Ordered a few lenses and feel like Christmas has come early. I know I was the same. It's that exciting. Um, as you guys follow me know, I have waited that long to get 4K60. I have talked about it, no joke, for even Casey from Camera Conspiracies uh, joked about me saying it so for so long. I've been waiting two, three years for that to happen. Um, Brett said the A7S III has the A7 uh, IV body. Can't wait for the A7 IV. Yeah, that will. The A7 IV probably will have the same body, Brett. It will be amazing. Um I've promised Kerry, though, no more cameras now for the next 12 months. So if they bring out the A7 IV, I'll be in serious trouble. But I did promise her no camera for 12 months. Um, what else have we got? Go with the camera said, uh, what do you use the EVF for? Well, I use the EVF all the time. Uh, because I shoot, like, outdoors in bright sunlight, Australia has very, very bright sun conditions here, I like to use the EVF for critical exposure. Uh, I find, remember I've said it all along, that the, the back screen on the Sony cameras is not very good. If you compare it to what the EOS R or the Nikon cameras have, it's not very good at all. Um, so I use the uh, screen a lot, or an awful lot. And if you use it for photography, uh, I use uh, the EVF quite a bit too. But, but critical exposure is important. Uh, I like to check critical exposure, particularly in the highlights. Uh, and if, if I'm using zebras, they just show up so much better inside the EVF. The other thing too, if you've got full sun that's coming onto your monitor, it's very, very hard to see. And that's how often people say, how did you nail your exposure? And it's because I'm using the EVF. I even use the EVF when it's on a gimbal. I'll hold the gimbal up to my face and then still use the EVF to get critical exposure. Uh, and that's important to me. The other thing too, if you're doing manual exposure, you get a much better view using your um, EVF than you will using the rear screen. But that's just the way that I work. Everyone works differently. Um, How's the refresh rate with the EVF? Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, it's 120 frames per second. It's it's unbelievable. Uh, yeah, there is two settings for it, though. I put both on high. I do have uh, them on high. Um, guy with the camera said, that flippy screen issue is the problem with this ZV-1. It's a bit annoying. Yeah, the way it flips, it drives me nuts. Sony should give, Sony, Sony should give you the option to turn that off so it doesn't flip when it's facing forward. Look, it doesn't do it... When you do it to the front, if you're looking normal, it doesn't flip. So if you're using it as, you know, shooting someone else and you tilt it, it's fine. It's only when you place it forward and tilt it that it does a reverse. Um, that's the only problem I could say about that. They need to fix that. Um, Sony better give the high resolution EVF on the a7 IV. I don't think you'll get the one that's on the a7 III. It'll probably be the one that's in the a7 R4, Brett. It'll be the... Um, what is it, the 3.6 million dot one, I'd say. Um, some YouTuber got an issue with the A7S III, horrible ISO noise in S-Log3. They were probably using the wrong settings, Pema. Um, remember, you've got to be careful. Uh, from what I've seen and just looked at myself, there's definite steps that you have to follow. ISO 640 is incredibly clean. Uh, once you go above that, if you say ISO 1000, it starts to get noisy. And a lot of the time, you seriously, and this is what's crazy, you seriously are better to jump up to 12800. If you go up to 12800 and use an ND, uh, the noise is, is almost non-existent. So you just have to work out what um, ISOs you have to use. In some cases, the ISO in some of the uh, ranges is slightly worse than the A7S II. But when you hit those, almost those dual gain sensors, uh, when that pushes in and clicks in, it's extraordinary. And like I said, what you do is you just have to play around with you perhaps using an ND. But, but in some ways, I will probably use different profiles if I'm dealing with low light anyway. I'll probably use more a standard profile, and I love standard profiles. If you look at Brandon Lee, or lie. If you look at his video he did, that is absolutely stunning. He shot that whole video with the standard profile. Remember, you're still dealing with 10 bit. So you still have a lot of leeway where you can push things around. And I still have to test that. But um, S-Log3 
is more for trying to push dynamic range. And that's where you want to get your 13 stops. They say it's 15 stops, but it's a true 13. All right, that's where you want to try and push to get the most range out of your camera is by using S-Log3. Well, in low light conditions, the maximum stops you have is around six to seven. So you don't need to be shooting S-Log3 in low light conditions. I'll still test this and I'll let you know, but um, I think probably I will use the standard profile when I'm going into low light or sign four. That's probably the way that it will work, but I'll, I'll let you know. But the ISOs are brilliant as long as you nail it and you nail your exposure. Do not underexpose. That's one thing as well. If you're dealing with a low light scenario with S-Log3, push that exposure 1.5 stops over and you probably will then crunch the blacks down and you shouldn't see noise. Um, hit that like button. Yeah, I would appreciate it, guys, if you could do that for me. Um, go with the camera says, I have a ProRes script, allows DaVinci Resolve free users to edit 10-bit 422. That's great. Nick said, David, will you switch uh, to the new RMAC? Yes, definitely. Um, I'm waiting. I'm due to get an upgraded computer. I've had this since 2013, and I can't believe how still this will still edit the footage like I'm doing 10-bit 422 um, at up to 50p. Uh, it edit, edits like butter, and I'm lucky that I paid a lot for this computer. Um, but I believe the new ARM computers are going to all have the T2 chip in them and they will play the H265 Kodak smoothly. Uh, so I'm waiting on Apple to release a new ARM Mac. So I probably, uh, th there's rumors they're going to announce a new one at the end of this year, but I think that's going to be a low end 13 MacBook Pro. I think probably what I will do is wait till early in the new year next year, where hopefully they'll bring out a new iPad Pro or perhaps a new iMac that is all ARM and it will have the T2 chips built in. And, and that's probably going to be the way that I'll go. And then I'll let Kerry, Kerry can have this, because um, this is still a great computer for what she would use it for. Uh, she could have this uh, in in uh, her room, which is in the house, that my studio is separate. Um, she could have this computer and so we'll do a swap. Uh, but I'm waiting on the ARM processor to come out. So yes, definitely, because I believe, and I should test it, I believe the iPad Pro will play all of the Sony um, uh, Kodaks uh, fairly smoothly. So that just shows you if an iCAD can play it, imagine what um, the new ARM Max will be able to do that, you know, have a much better processor. So yes, I will be buying a um, processor Mac as soon as one's available. Uh, David needs a comfort screen. Pema Sony for video camera doesn't need high resolution 9.3 million EVF and doesn't have enough resolution for photography camera. Sony does reverse giving better resolution EVF in video camera. I'm not quite sure what you mean. Um, well, I think it does need it, Pema. It's, it's, I love it. I really love it. When you look at through that EVF, it is amazing. Um, LT said, hey, David, do you think the new Sony camera registered is the FS6? I'm going to talk about that in a minute. I better move on because um, we've been here an hour, I think. We have, and I've still only got through the first story. Uh, I'd either just proxy. Well, I could do. See, that's another thing too. I could, I could proxy as well, but I don't want to do that. I haven't had to yet, um, DZ. So the good thing is I can work up to 24 and 50p on 422 will work fine. As long as I'm using the intra codex, they, they will work fine. So that's not an issue. Uh, it's only if I go to 120 or 100 that I, it, it won't work. Or if I use H265, all the H264 codex apart from 100 or 120 uh, will work. So, you know, I'm not going to use proxies uh, unless I have to, of course. Um, let me just come down. Oh, David said, no, meant to give you 100. Thank you so much, David. Like I said, that's the highest, biggest donation I've ever received. Um, wait for the A7 IV or get this, strictly for video. Uh, I, if you're strictly video, I would get the A7S III. Definitely. Um, I'm debating about trading my Takina 20 uh, F2 uh, and my Zeiss 16 to 35 F4 for the Sony 12 to 24 GM. Well, that is a stunning lens. Um, you've just got to justify, I suppose, uh, whether you need a 35 mil or not, though. That, that's what you'd have to think about. I personally would prefer a 16 to 35 than a 12 to 24 because I'd use that more often. 
Uh, but it comes down to a personal preference, Rob, uh, what you'd like to do. You could, I mean, I would probably get the 16 to 35 F2.8, uh, uh, but, but that's me. Um, but the 12 to 24 is a, is a beautiful lens. Um, Bajorn says, I'm coming from my second wedding shoot. Guys, don't use S-Log3 for low light. Yeah, that's that's why I said I wouldn't be using S-Log3 for low, low light. S-Log is way cleaner in those scenarios. HLG works. Yeah, that's another thing you could do. Uh, you could use HLG because the ISO is so much lower. Uh, I've got to test all this yet, and I'll let you know. You meant S-Log2. Yep, yep, thanks for saying that. S-Log2 is way less de demanding in ISO, um, but I'll have to let you know when I test it myself. Um, Pema said their videography for long times it doesn't make any noise in camera but looks massively grainy in post before editing and that's because they're using the wrong ISO the wrong codec I'd say um, Carl said the higher the EVF resolution the better for video yep it certainly is alright let's have a look let's go to the next story because uh, <laughs> I've been here for ages what is it 106 I'm going to get told off again people will be saying you take too long David I'll oh, bet 106, I'll put 107 because we're basically there. All right, next story is the problem um, with the A7C. Uh, I'm on the wrong one here, so let me switch this around. Where is that one? Oh, here, yeah. Uh, the good, the bad, yep. Yeah. All right, so I wanted to talk to you about this. Um, this is interesting. Let me enlarge this, actually, because it's too small. Let me just go out and back again. All right. This was an interesting story because it matches what I actually said um, about the, this camera. And like I did discuss last week, I think the camera is beautiful. I, I do think the two-tone particularly is really gorgeous. Uh, and I love that retro type look. If you compare the two of them, if I was buying one of these, I would buy the two-tone one. And it's quite interesting because some people, when I was talking about this with Aaron, some people were getting upset and saying, oh, you know, I was wrong with what I was saying about bagging. And I was just talking from my experience about this camera that I think for the price that it is, I think you're better off with an A7 III. And I still believe that. If this had other things, I'd change my mind. But let's look what they're saying here anyway. They're saying the problem with the Sony a7C uh, is the idea is great. The specs and price are not. And if you look down through here, uh, it's saying the good is nearly everyone likes the idea to have a full frame camera in the smaller a6000 body form factor. I showed this with Aaron. I actually showed it. The, the size of this is almost the same size as an a7 III, but they've chopped the EVF off. So the size difference is not that big. It, it is not that different compared to, say, having um, an a6400 or something like that. Uh, so they're saying the form factor was good, but they're saying the bad, and this is what I agree with, the, the specs and pricing are off. These specs would be okay if the camera cost $13.99 or less. I think uh, $13.99, this would have been a great entry-level option for the masses. But Sony asked $17.99 for that price. I would have at least expected to get 4K 60p, the new Sony menu, two slots, the A7R4 EVF, uh, a 6.5.6 uh, million dot. That's right, the A7 IV is the 5.6 million dot EVF. I think that's what you'll get in the A7 IV. Uh, and better LCD screen. And uh, so this must have been the, that one camera guy's video, actually. Uh, as it stands today, this camera is a fail. Sony has now only one option to give it a four to 500 price cut in the holiday season. And as a tip for the future, don't repeat this mistake when they will release the A7C2 in two years time. So this is the problem because if you look at it, it's even worse in Australia, guys. This camera is way more expensive than the A7S3. Now, let me just have a look. I'm going to have a look. Um, Let's go new window. Let me bring this over here. All right, so we'll look for A7SC. Um, 
Oh, A7C, here it is. What am I doing? All right, so th this is going to freak you out in America, right? The average price for the A7C here in Australia is $3,098. All right, if you look at that, two nights. So you could say $3,000. It's $3,100 in video. Go. It just depends where you're looking at the price of this, all right? So it's... Three over three thousand dollars. Anyway, you could say if you look at a general price. All right, so that's the price of the A7C. Let's go A7 III. A7 III. 2393 two, uh, That's three two there. That's expensive there. Two eight. Um, oh, that's the A7S. So in each case, the A7 III is a couple of hundred dollars cheaper than what the A7C is. Like, that is nuts. Now, yes, I, I can understand that you you have the fold-out screen uh, and better tracking and stuff like that, but they could put that in the A7 III as well. It, it's obviously Sony held out in doing that, but the A7 III has a much better body. Um, it has a dual-card slot battery, um, uh, dual card slots as well, which is massive if you're dealing with, uh, you know, say using it uh, in page shoots and things like that. So I don't understand the pricing, and that, that's the issue with this. I, I just don't understand the pricing. If this was going to be their entry-level camera, it should have been underneath the A7 III. Remember, not only has it only got one card slot, you can only shoot one four thousandth of a second. The... Uh, Flash sync speed is 160th of a second as well. So there's flaws all through it if you're dealing with it against, say, what you would get with the A7 III. Yes, the A7 III hasn't got the fold-out screen, but the costing is just not justified with this camera. If this was priced at the uh, at a right amount, I would be saying this camera is amazing and it's fantastic. If they priced this at, like I said, say that $1,300 US, it would have been great, but to price it at eighteen hundred is just too expensive, and and that's the thing. And I, I'm not going to change my thinking. If people love this, good on you, and go out and buy it because it obviously suits your needs. Remember, we're all different, but I think the pricing and the specs are flawed for where it's sitting, uh, and that's really all I'm going to say uh, on that at this stage. Uh, all right, let's go down to here. Um, what was the next one? I think it's just news now, actually. Let me just go news. Because there's a few. Oh, no, the rumour. It was the rumour. Let me put that in. Uh, new camera. And we're at one hour, 13.50. All right, so the next story is this one. Where were we? Um, I've just got to find where it is. Have I got it? Oh, here, yep. Yeah. All right, so Sony, there is a uh, rumour now going around. The, well, they're saying it's official, that they've registered a new camera. Uh, it's If you look down here, uh, there is a W number that they're talking about, so in China, so they have given it this WW63 whatever number, and it's also equipped with Wi-Fi, 5 gigahertz to 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, a while ago, that would have been a high-end professional camera, but now I don't think that's the case, and he's more or less saying that here, that uh, a while ago it would have been something like a new A7 series camera uh, or something like that. But now they probably say that that will be in almost every camera that's now released is uh, 5 gigahertz or, uh, or 2.4 gigahertz. They seem to think that it will be a new RX camera, and it probably makes more uh, sense to me. He's saying in here that, in summary, my first guess is that this is an RX camera, and only as a second option, I think this might be an A74 or an A93. I don't think it's going to be one of those cameras at this stage. I think now, due to the fact that they've just announced the A7C, I can't see them announcing an A7 IV at this stage. I really can't. And I think it's a bit early for an A9 III. I think an A9 III would probably be announced sometime early next year for the Olympics. Um, so I think that's possibly the case, but it probably is more than likely going to be a new RX camera. I just wanted to share that with you as a story. 
Um, so let's go here for the next one. We're going to go through some news now because I've got some interesting news to share with you. All right, so news. Um, Sigma have announced, well, they've just basically released a new 105 uh, DGN macro. Now, it's $7.99. It's really reasonably priced. I'd love to have a look at this lens, actually. Um, I'll show you here because you'll get some better ideas of, of how it looks. Uh, typical Sigma uh, look. Um, but a 105 is a great focal length for macro because particularly if you're doing insects and stuff like that because you don't have to be too close uh, to the subject. I use a 35 macro. I use a really small one. Um, I use the APS-C one, but I'm only shooting wedding rings and stuff like that for macro work. I would love a dedicated macro lens though, uh, and this may be one that I could think about having a look at. Uh, it looks really quite nice. Um, like I said, typical Sigma uh, look about it, look the same build quality that you get from your typical Sigma. Then there's a whole stack of images uh, that you can see through here that look really nice and sharp. It looks great. Um, and for the cost, fantastic. If it's $7.99, uh, really looks like it's a nice looking lens. Uh, be interesting to see how this compares to the uh, Sony um, 90 um, it looks beautiful. I, I think that looks really nice. So that's just a, a new lens that's been announced, which I think looks terrific. Um, what else have we got? Uh, rumor 2. This is exciting. Sony have, um, there's rumors that Sony are going to produce two fast GM lenses. Um, and I, I'd love to know, too, what you guys think this might be, but uh, I need to bring this out, too, because it's jumped away. I don't know why it disappeared from the pop-out chat for when we need it. Um, I think that you probably will see an 85 1.2. That, that's what I'm hoping that we're going to see here. They're not saying what it is. All they're saying is that they're going to have two Sony Fast Primes, uh, and they're saying that uh, both primes are spectacular. Now, you're going to have to pay for these. Uh, and definitely made to have a big wow impact in the community. So I've got a feeling that this is what I'm just predicting. I think one will be an 85 1.2. The other lens that I think will probably come out is a 35 1.2 as well. But that that's what I'm thinking it will be. Um, an 85 1.2 would be unbelievable. That's one thing Canon and uh, Sony, we just don't have an 85 at that sort of focal length. Uh, oh, Rice said 50 millimeter F1. Uh, they may push something that is crazy. Uh, they did say that they wanted to do that, right? So that could be a possibility, um, a 50 F1. Uh, but I think you, I, I'm, I do think it'll an 85 1.2 is going to be one of them. And that really excites me. Uh, God help me if they bring out that one. Uh, I'll have to wait a while before I could afford that, though. I'll have to get some work, that's for sure. But that is really exciting. Uh, they're saying the two primes will arrive in early 2021. How exciting is that? We are so blessed now in Sony with the, the lenses and stuff that we've got. Uh, the other one, too, is the, the Tamron 70 to 300. Uh, I'm getting this lens. It might be this week coming uh, in the next week. Uh, so I should be getting it that I can test it for you guys. So I'll let you know. Uh, I was contacted yesterday to say that I should be getting it this week. Um, so I'm hoping to get that soon and I can take it away and do some testing. Uh, that, that's the, far, the size. And again, it's following the same filter thread as all the other lenses. So that's brilliant. No stabilization, though. That doesn't bother me though, because I, I am just always prepared to up the shutter speed and then I, I just don't have an issue with it. If it keeps the cost down dramatically um, and the size down dramatically, uh, I don't mind at all. And all the cameras have internal IBIS. I mean, it does make a difference if you're doing video, yes. But if you're doing stills, um, I, I, all the lenses that I've used, I've found it's fine as long as I can have the... Um, shutter speed raised up accordingly so but i should get it uh, if you want to check the tamron sizes here you'll see the whole lenses are listed there uh, the whole range i mean like i said how blessed are we now that we have amazing tamron lenses across the whole range uh, and we also have sigma across the whole range samyang oh it's just we just blessed you know we really are blessed now in sony that we've got so many options that we can use um 
And the last story that I wanted to talk about was this, because this is also interesting that uh, this is pretty quick too compared to how Nikon usually work. And I think that's because it hasn't sold as well as they believed. There's rumours, well, it's not a rumour, they've actually got a date now that you can add to your calendar. Uh, there's going to be a, Z, uh, a Z7 II and a Z6 II uh, coming out. I believe it's going to be, well, it's October the 14th. Um, so you can add it to your calendar and watch that if you want to. They're just saying that uh, the specs that they're guessing that it will have is dual card slots, one CF Express and one SD slot, improved uh, AF for face, eye and animal detection. And now, look, let's be honest, the face, uh, eye, AF and um, eye detection now for all the cameras is really good. Uh, I think I think Sony and Canon are still slightly ahead. Uh, Nikon is probably a fraction behind, but this may bring them up to the same speed as the other two. Um, it's got dual XP processors, faster maximum frame rate, a larger buffer, 4K60 video capability, and the ability to take a proper grip with buttons for vertical shooting. I think Nikon, well, look, they blew it. Let, let's face it, Nikon blew that first release. They released the Z6 and the Z7 without dual card slots, and you were paying uh, like a high-end camera, that, that you were paying as if it was a high-end camera. And it isn't the way it shoots, but the features weren't. Um, you had one card slot, and also you couldn't even put a vertical grip on those cameras. That that was a, such a bad flaw that they did with that camera. So they're addressing all the issues uh, with this camera. So these two cameras are probably going to be actually very, very good. But is it too late? That That's what I want to know. Nikon should have seen the writing on the wall and maybe not this because it probably wasn't available at the time, but they could have had all the, the rest of it in the Mark I version and I don't know why they didn't have that in the one Mark version. Um, does it say anything else? Uh, 24 megapixels sent, I think they were saying... Was it the same sensor? Yeah, they're still saying it. they think it's going to have a 24 megapixel sensor. Um, they say Nikon uh, also claims that the Nikon Z6 II will be the last Nikon camera with a 24 megapixel sensor, meaning that Nikon is finally planning to move away from the Sony made sensors. That's almost certainly the one used in the Sony a7 III and the a7C. No word on what the next generation will be. Um, but that's Anyway, coming out soon, so it's, I suppose it's a little bit exciting if you're a Nikon shooter. Uh, at least there's something there. So let's open it up to Q&A, and then we'll finish. So one, oops, 123, 45. Let me go back to there. Let me just drag that out. All right, so let's have a look. I'm just going to start from, I won't go right back. Uh, Rob said, uh, do you think the EVF will migrate to other new Sony cameras? It will eventually, Rob, yes. Uh, battery life better than your current Sony? No, it's worse. Uh, the battery life on the A7S is three is worse. I think, like I said, where I used to use one battery, I would now use two. Um Yeah, and Robert will get migrated eventually, but I think they'll probably use the 5.7 or 6 million dot one uh, in most of the cameras first. Uh, you'll probably find that the bigger EVF will go in the A9 III. Uh, the A7 IV uh, will have the same as the A7R IV. I be, I, that's what I'm picking anyway. I'm using XAVCI. Um, uh, thanks for the free well recommendation. I can correct for the color cast. Yeah, the color cast is minimal though, Carl. It's not where I'd worry about it at all. It's it's very, very minute. Um, do you think Sony A9X or whatever it's called to be a larger size camera to have a battery life that is compatible with the Sony A9 Mark II? Maybe. Um, it'll be interesting to see what they do with the new A9. Um, I mean, it... it it wouldn't bother me if they did make the bat the body slightly larger. I mean, I did used to use the D3S. Um, for sports shooters, probably wouldn't mind it being a, a, a little bit larger, but who knows? Um, 
Just got home from work. Can someone tell me where to get that shirt David has on? Um, it got sent to me. <laughs> I've got a few of these. I love. I should sell these. I should do this as merch. Would you like me to do merch on this? Yeah, I can do this as my merch. Is anyone interested in doing merch? Let me know. Um, what else? David Taylor, no, meant to give you 100. I oh, said there, yeah, thanks so much, David, for that donation. Wait for the A7S. I, I did talk about that. For video, I'd get the A7S three. Panasonic A5, I haven't looked much yet, but Panasonic always does wonderful cameras. I just wish they'd fix their focusing. They need to go to phase detection. If, if they did that, the Panasonics would be incredible. It's really only the um, that side that lets them down, really. Um, yeah, 5.7 million dot, the A7R4. That's what I think will be in the A7 IV as well. Let me keep coming down. Uh, Rob said, uh, what got my interest on the 12 to 24 is that it has amazing sun stars. 12 millimeter is wide enough for horseshoe bend. And with my other lenses, I will have the 12 millimeter to 400 covered. Yep, fully understand. Um, Axma said, it's almost as if they had the A7 III ready a year ago, but waited, yeah. Uh, the A7C isn't targeted to most of us, but it's intended to expand market share at the lower end. It's massively overpriced. See, and I still think that this is a better option for vloggers. And that's the thing that I'm not quite certain about. Uh, you know, for, if you're a vlogger, this thing is brilliant. It really is. The ZV-1 is a great vlogging camera uh, and way cheaper. There are so many great cameras out there, but I think the Panasonic GH5 is the ever, for the price and capabilities, people get lost about camera. Yeah, the GH5, I loved having the GH5. It was the only the autofocus that, that I didn't like when I had that camera. Uh, the Sigma 105 Macro looks great. Reviews look great. I have the Sony 90. The Sony 90, though, is amazing. It is slow focusing, though. Yep, you're correct. It'll be interesting to see how that compares to the, the Sigma 105, actually. Um, David, uh, you could be streaming 4K with full frame speed. Right now, it seems around 19 to 22 frames per second. Let me know if you want your stream in 4K. I like to help you. I would like uh, to probably go 4K. The only thing is I don't know if my computer could take it. That's the difference. Uh, I'm not sure that it would have it. Plus, I'd need new hardware because all of the stuff that I use is 1080p rated. Uh, and that's the problem. So I'd need some sort of new switcher and stuff like that that would give me 4K. Um, finally, a 51 point, uh, F1.0. Yep. Raymond said, looking so forward to new lenses. Can't wait to compliment my 24 and 135. Oh, and hi, everyone. Sorry I'm late, but my thumbs up is just in time. Thank you so much for giving a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. Uh, Nivak said, uh, the new GMs will probably be 1.2 or faster. Yep, they will for sure. Um, but maybe as expensive. Yeah, that's the issue. They, they are going to be super expensive. If Sony bring out an 85 1.2, I'm telling you, I'm going to get it. But when I get money, I, I just can't afford it at this stage because I'm just not working. Uh, I'm, you know, I mean, weddings aren't starting for me until next year. So I can't afford to do that. I only got the A7S III because I sold gear to get it. Um, so if a 1.2 comes out, I'll either have to sell gear to get it or um, wait until I'm starting to earn some money. Um, where were we? Pema said, uh, oh, and AF1, finally my dream has come true. Uh, Pema said, I don't know why Sony held real tracking for A7 III versus A7 R3. And if Sony give real-time tracking, I will use Sony A7 III versus Sony uh, A7 R3 for more 10 years. Yeah, I know it's a pity they didn't add that real tracking in. It just shows they probably could have done it. If they've done it with the A7C, which is basically the same camera, it should have been added to the a A7 III. It's in the A7C, so it should be in the A7 III, but they're not going to give it to us. Um, 
Interactive said, I own Emmy Awards with commercial shoot with the iPhone. Cameras mean nothing if the talent's not there. Uh, yeah, Interactive, I would love to do 4K, though. But like I said, I just don't think I'd need new hardware, I think. Um what else? The battery life on the A7 III is definitely worse. Yep, definitely is. Uh, I think I use two batteries now compared to when I used to use one. Uh, I was surprised how fast the battery was going down. So you, you do have to be aware of that. Uh, and I did notice it was, you know, quite a bit different. Um, so it's just something that, but I'm not worried about that. I've got plenty of batteries. So, and the batteries aren't that big to lug around. Uh, just have a spare one in your pocket. Um Axman said, do merch on this if you do uh, not get a copyright infringement. Well, I don't think I could get a copyright infringement because Sony don't own the Alpha. Um, it's just an Alpha beta, isn't it? So I should be right. Um, G'day, Aaron. How are you? Hope you're enjoying New York. Um, Pema said, I think Fan Fan uh, used point-and-shoot cameras uh, and his work is amazing. Nothing wrong with point and shoot cameras if you uh, you can get some great results. Yeah, just got into New York City. Hope you have a good time, Aaron. Just stay safe. Uh, Interactive said, no, you don't need anything. I can help you with existing hardware. Um, just email me then, uh, Interactive. Um, I'll stick my email down here just so that you can let me know what you think. I stuck the email for you there. Uh, just send me some thoughts um, if you want to. Uh, Raymond said, uh, curious if you got your glass screen protector yet. No, I haven't yet. Um, I still need one. I'll put the link to, of the one I've bought uh, down below. I'll find what it is and I'll stick it down below uh, so you know um, what it is. Uh, I won't know what it's like, but it looked like it was okay. It was about $19, I think. It was a glass one, so I'm just waiting on that too. Uh, thanks, we are doing good. That's great, Aaron. Uh, not going to lie, after Matty Hopper's review of the A7C, I was kind of looking at it like, mm. <laughs> was that a good thing or not? Like, I just don't think it's a big deal, but, oh, well, that's just me. Uh, and that's about it, guys. We're at the end of the um, show. Apart from that, everyone, stay tuned. I will have some other videos up in the coming days. Uh, I did get a new tripod yesterday sent to me and a new backpack, uh, so I'll talk about those. Uh, I've also got an amazing light coming. Uh, it's the first one I've seen. I can't remember who it is, but it's, you know, like the lights sometimes I've reviewed, which are your square lights. This is also a massive battery back as well. So you could be charging up your camera and also having light coming from this, and it's the one unit. So stay tuned. Um, yeah, that's the David's Junk email account. Um, so stay tuned for that because that's coming to me uh, in the next few days as well, I think. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, apart from that, guys, uh, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe uh, uh, over the weekend or whatever else you're doing. Uh, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye, everyone.